What's happening, everyone? This is Chris Cusimano, and we are episode nine of Podcasting with Kuzi. We made it to nine. We're almost at double digits. And today I have someone super, super special today. His name is Howard Weinstein. And before I introduce you to him, I'm going to give you a little bit of background about him, at least, at least how I have a relationship with him and why he's so powerful in my life. How's the Howard's the type of guy that when he calls you, one of the few people that when they call you, that instead of him wanting something, he wants to give you something pretty much every single time. So when he calls, I get excited to pick my phone because it's either a, uh, a critique, a positive critique, or he's giving me a compliment. And I, I love compliments. Um, I guess he strokes the ego a little bit. So I'm like, yep, power's calling. All right. It's, it gets me all, it gets me all pepped up. Uh, there's only been two times he's asked for favors and, but both times I'm more than happy to, uh, oblige, uh, one, he wanted to give, make me a Guinea pig when he tested me with some questions in front of some big wigs at Keller Williams and dove deep into my life and caught me off guard and got me semi-emotional before I caught myself. I realized I was, I was being recorded. And the second time he wanted me to do a presentation for the, the region of South Florida and that's what's going to lead me to his introduction. He is inside of Keller Williams leadership, um, focusing, focusing, focusing mostly in South Florida. And without any further ado, this is Howard Weinstein. And I, did I get most of that information correct? Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's funny. I was, when you asked me to do this, I was thinking, um, how, how did I get to know Chris so well in the beginning? Because I was trying to put two and two together, you know, obviously we know each other's colleagues in our Keller Williams world. And, uh, but I was trying to remember what, what made, what attracted me to your personality and your skill set and your passion. And so I thought back and I'm like, okay, uh, in one of my roles within the region, I've done work in your market center, you know, I've spoken at team meetings and I've done some training in there and you've been in some of that. And I just, what I, when I'm around people like you that have such a strong passion and compassion and drive, and talent, uh, it's attractive to me. So it's what made me connect with you as far as having conversation, dialogue, and questions. So it was, uh, it, I, I was thinking through that this morning when I was trying to remember, how do I know Chris so well, or what, what connected me in, in the beginning with him? So you just did what I just introduced you as a person of doing. You just really, literally just gave me a bunch of compliments in the introduction of yourself. <laughs> that's just that's just who you are you can't even oh, help man, I, that means a lot it means a lot um, <laughs> yeah so um what i do in my world is currently is um i uh i've been with keller williams since 20 end of 2011 going into 2012 um i'm a um general manager slash operating partner for three market centers in the tampa bay marketplace uh clearwater um largo area and northwest tampa um and then I'm also the operating partner for a market center that we just opened a couple of years ago over in Cocoa Beach. Um, so I, I do that. Um, I uh, do coaching, do quite a bit of coaching with our agents and our people. Um, I am um, uh, I was an area director for the South Florida region, and I minimized that role some. What? Because I'm doing a lot of other projects, but I still help out quite a bit in the region and work with Mark Olish and that. Um, I'm a uh, KWU proof trainer, so I do a lot of teaching through that and something called Florida Educational Services. So that's kind of what I do professionally right now. So I, I lead a, a lot of people, a lot of agents, but the cool part is like with you, I'm in partnership with them. I'm not just leading them. So you're not in production yourself at all. Like you're not showing houses. You're not going on listing appointments or anything no, like that. No, no I haven't. I, honestly, Chris, I've not been in production. Oof probably for well over 25 years. I've been wow. leader for that long. Yeah, I've been, I was only in Asia for five, five or six years. I grew up around the industry sure? and I sold for a period of time, but um, I came from education over into real estate. And um, the whole time I was selling, I wanted to work to find some ways to incorporate my education background into this field. And so leadership was the best vehicle for me to make that happen. Um, and then eventually, and I, you know, obviously you have a lot of listeners from all kinds of real estate companies and places, but Keller Williams was a place for me to be able to really, uh, um, 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 implode with my education element because we're such a learning based company. So the teaching was attractive to me, but no, I haven't, you know, I haven't sold myself. I, I'm not having been in production in, in quite some time. Well, you said a couple of things there and I, I, I kind of want to 
touch upon is that every time I do one of these podcasts, I, I do speak a lot about about Keller Williams, and this isn't a recruit me thing or, or at all. Actually, in my Tuesday night trainings, I talk, I show a lot of the my last Tuesday night one, for example, I demonstrated uh, the smart plans that I created, and I showed agents how to do that. Right. And uh, a lot of people always accuse me, they'll accuse me of uh, drinking the Kool Aid I hear, and I'm like, you know what? If the Kool Aid is delicious, I'm gonna drink it because oh, yeah. because they they really do a good job. And I'm not a fanboy of too many things, right? I, there's not too many people that I'm a cheerleader for, but when you're when you when I interviewed to become a full time realtor before I was part time for the longest time, I interviewed each brokerage, and Keller Williams was the only one who spoke about developing business plans. Mm -hmm. And even further, I don't know what took me so long to really um, to really grasp all the tools that were in play. Maybe I just didn't really realize they existed. But mm -hmm. every time I think I'm at a ceiling, I'll reach out to someone like you or Mary or Jackie or Mark sure. Olash. And there's these other opportunities within the company I didn't even know existed. Right, right. Well, and, you, what you just said is um, really vital because I think a lot of real estate agents get in the business to sell houses. And of course, right, that's what we are. We're realtors. And, and mm -hmm. it's like your Keller says, he'll have a realtor on his, on his tombstone when he dies. And, and, and God love him, I, I respect that. However, I think that like you're, you're Chris, not only an incredible professional, but you're what I call a career track real estate person. You have a strong team, an immensely strong team. And, um, and uh, you guys, you, you sell homes and you do it at a high level. Um, and a lot of people think that that's all there is to our profession. Sure. And I, I think what that does sometimes is like it limits, like you, you, you use the word a second ago, ceiling. I think it, it limits them. And I think one of the things that we, I'm biased obviously in my company, but one of the things that we do best in our world is, is it, you're, you, it's, it is a business. It's not, you're not an order taker. And when you have a real estate business rather than a, um, just a practice of just selling homes, what that does is, and I think you've been in the real estate industry for 20 years as well, right? Mm -hmm. yep. So you've seen ups and you've seen downs and you've seen steadies and you've seen crash and you've seen rise and you've seen all these different things. And when you have a business that has opportunities attached to it, what that does is it allows for more longevity and it allows you to have the, the comfort because you're building wealth around just selling homes in a way that it's going to allow you to stay in the business when it crashes it goes up it goes down it goes up and it's funny because you see a lot of people that have only been in the industry no offense to them god love them one two three four five years even mm -hmm. 10 for that matter but they've never they've never um they've never endured an economic shift in the industry and Correct. I, think, yep. I think it's really important that um you look at the industry as a whole and everything that webs out of it <clears throat> more than just selling homes. And I know, I, I hope that's not coming across like, oh, you just sell houses. That's not what I mean by that to the average agent out there in the marketplace. I'm just, it's, I like to explore a business conversation with the agent so that they understand that they, that they need to have um, predictability and stability to the world is what I'm saying, personal and professional. Yeah, well, you said a lot of things there that I want to unpack. I'm gonna I'm gonna mention one briefly, and then I'm gonna go back into a little deeper dive into Howard since you put me on the spot one day myself. And uh, and by the way, if you guys stick around through this whole podcast, the conversation that led up to today, it was he called he was calling me about he was listening to the podcast and he was giving positive critique, and then it and then it spiraled into other things. And I'm like, whoa, 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 stop right there. This is something that I think other people need to hear. And if I hear it now, I'm not going to be interested in hearing it later. So stop talking about it and talk about it live. So stick right. around for that. But when you mentioned about there's a lot of agents doing well in only two, three, four, five years, I can tell you, um, I, I can't, I guess you, I can't even count how high of how many flashes in the pans I have seen that get in the uh, industry, they come in blazing guns blazing and they're yeah. the best in the world and i'm the greatest i'm the amazing and i'm like no you didn't you went to school for a week and you had a lot of enthusiasm yes kudos to you for doing really really well in a really easy market to do well in but they didn't put systems and plans in place to stay stable and uh to stay humble and and you just want to kind of shake them like you, you might want to put some humility in yeah. you well, I, call it, yeah. I call it insulation. I, I, what I think of when, what you're just talking about right now, Chris, is I, I call it insulation. Like my conversations with agents in my in market centers and people I come in contact with is that's great that you're doing this great right now. 
However, Chris, what have you put in place in your business, in your world to insulate you should there be interest rates doubling next week or yeah. values drop in half next week or changes like that? Like it's it's all insulation conversations. And if you're not, well, it's systems and models. 100%. And so, so if you put together all these systems and models, which sounds very topical, we dive really deep in this stuff on Tuesday nights. Uh, the podcast would, you guys would fall asleep listening to this, but the systems and models that, that are in play are really do protect you against, against these forces. Cause what a lot of people do in the industry or any business for per se is just, they, they're very reactionary. They react to the phone ringing and they react to a, a, a text message, but they don't go out and procure business in multiple ways and develop plans what happens when that phone rings for a prime example go ahead you know what i was going to say i'm sorry to interrupt you i think it goes with mindset though because i think what happens is is we and you know we interpret success as busyness and so busyness is going to yeah. show that house or running to that listing appointment or you know right and it always amazes me at our companies you know we have an event every year um in august called mega camp and you you know gary puts on agents that are doing you know, insane four, five, six, seven hundred deals a year, twenty five hundred deals a year, yeah. and I'm thinking they've got the same twenty four hours that the agent that's doing four million that is like, I'm too busy, I can't go to a class, I'm too busy, and I think a lot of that has to do with their mindset and how they set their mind going into their business because um, it's and and you said it yourself a few minutes ago, yeah, you spend a week, get a license, front yourself into a real sales, and start selling houses. The thing, the gap, right? The gap is not educating themselves from a, a mental standpoint of what it's going to take to build this insulated business, or like you said, a business that implements systems and models and tools so that they're able to endure any element of a market and not get trapped in this like, oh, my phone rang, I've got to go take a call right now, or I can't like, you know, you're, yeah. you're yeah. you got a family with a beautiful family and you've built a, a huge business at the same time as a beautiful family. And there's something to be said for that because you want to preserve your family the same way you want to know more so than you want to preserve your business. So you were talking, you know, yeah, thank you for those compliments. So, uh, yeah, so it's funny you say that. So this morning, um, I'll just say my wife is on our team. She does a lot of back end operations on our on our journeys and our plans. She, she, there's a very specific system in the model in place where she is involved with um, for this particular thing we're doing uh, is for the envelopes. So she is manually stuffing envelopes and she's like well it will save us a hundred dollars i'm like well hold on you just spent two days stuffing envelopes is your you just literally spent probably 40 hours stuff envelopes you don't think that's worth a hundred dollars for someone else to do that why you could have been working on something bigger okay. and she's not guilty that's just the most recent thing that happened um the head of that conversation i convinced her to finally get a uh a, a maid to come to our house twice a week to clean so she didn't have to i'm like because you shouldn't babe you're i'm not i'm not discounting maids or anything i'm just saying that for your particular role in the team your time is much more valuable than if you are in the bathroom cleaning but then, Chris, what you're talking about is what is what is a person or an agent what is their value per hour and i don't mean to get that tangible with it but it is i just had this conversation with a, a dear dear friend of mine that's in a whole different industry and we were sitting down talking about a growth plan talking about a business plan he's in a completely different business and i was coaching him on that and i said to to the, to the person i said what what is your what is your value per hour like you said with your wife like okay no offense to anybody but that stuffy envelopes is a 12 dollar an hour gig it's a high school job Right. Versus something that's going to bring you two, three, four, five, six hundred dollars an hour. That's it. That's, it. Yeah, that, that's, that's a that's a that's a whole conversation in itself. It's a whole conversation. And I experienced this a lot, even with the newer agents on my team and even some people that I coach. I'll be like, um, what, so what are you guys up to? Because they have their lead generation time. I call it the daily HBCs or um, the daily homes by Koozie task list. And they're the only time you're not supposed to be doing that if something urgent comes. And by the way, there's no real estate emergencies. But sometimes there's something that's a little more urgent and pressing that you got to take care of. I get it. It happens. But then I'll reach out and they're like, oh, I had to go turn off lights at a listing. Someone left it on. I'm like, what? Exactly. No, like, no, no. That's not when you do that. Oh, I'm like, oh, I have to get my hair done because we have a photo shoot next week. I'm like, now you have to do that? Right. You know what I mean? Like, but, so no. I, I, I battle that all the time because they feel I, like they feel busy and feeling busy makes them feel productive. But really, they're just taking an easy way out from working. Yeah, it's that whole don't mistake, um, uh, don't mistake movement um, with achievement, right? And then it's that whole, you know, we teach the six personal perspectives. 
And the second perspective is the 80-20 principle, right? And so how much of your time are you spending in your 80%? How much of your time are you spending in your 20%? I'm trying to remember who it was. I think it was Mark King, our president, was talking in one of our calls recently. And he said, if I looked at how you're spending your time or I looked at your schedule, does it align with the goals you have for your business? And that that just that was like resonated like, oh, my God, yes. You know, and does your schedule really reflect what you're doing? So it's almost like when you go on a diet and they say, write down everything you're eating, right? Really write down everything you're eating. And then you look back and you're like, God, this yep. is how I ate. It's the same thing with how are you spending your time? What are you doing with your time? And uh, it's it's always such an eye opener for me as many years as I've been doing this. Yeah, it's funny not to not to uh, kind of spin away from this real estate conversation, but one of the the best things I learned how to do in my life was track everything, and especially when it came to dieting. Um, I'm reading this book now. I mentioned it before it's called uh, Muscle for Life, and uh, this guy I read his first book. I'll give you a little story about it because this podcast, even though it's about real estate, there's more per there's a lot of personal stuff in here. And you just, since we're talking about recording calories and all that. So if you want to get in really good shape, I read, um, I read his first book a while ago. Basically what happened was, uh, I, my wife and I planned a trip before our girls were born right after my son was born, we were going to go to blizzard beach. She was going to get rid of her pregnancy body. I was going to get rid of my, my flub and we we're going to be promote. We're going to go, 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 go. And we're going to celebrate by taking off our shirts and everyone going to enjoy looking at us. Right. Yep, yep. Um, so what I did was I, I got all those like beach body, um, all those beach body, uh, I'm not knocking the programs, by the way, there's programs like insanity, P90X, oh, Les Mills, yeah, Pump, yeah, Beast. Yeah. I had them all. I had a whole drawer of them. And what I did, I'm back to back to back to back. And when the trip came, um, when the trip came, I, I was in, I was in great shape, but I was skinny. Like, I like, so I go to my wife, I'm like, so, you know, what, what are you doing? like this or what, you know? And she was like, well, you're, you're skinny. <laughs> and I realized then, I realized then that I was being lazy. I was not really researching what it takes to eat right. and what it really takes to get in shape and putting it actually on paper and following a plan to get there. Anyway, so I read his first book. So then I got frustrated. Um, I, I read, I picked up Michael Matthews. Is that who the author is on that book? Oh yeah, it's great. And this one yeah. he just came out with. So his yeah. first one's called Bigger, Leaner, Stronger. And I, I was just desperate looking on the inter internet for whatever and for anything I could find. And I found it on Kindle and I read it the, the whole the one night. And I was like, oh, my God, this is the answer. So I it started implementing. He, so anyways, my point was to tie it back to it. He is a big stickler of a very specific eating regimen, a very specific uh, workout setup. Right. And right. But you have to write everything in a journal. And I got abs for the first time in my life. Like I want to say eight months, maybe eating 60% of the time to what he did. And then I got fat again. Then I got abs again. And then I got fat again now. And now I'm working my, my way back down, you, you know, I, whatever. Yes, I hear you. I so hear anyways, you. my point is by tracking things and not just relying on others and actually doing the homework yourself is so powerful in everything you, you do. Yeah. But Howard, before we move on to another topic, I, um, I want to know a little bit more about yourself because you said that you were in real estate for 20 years, but you came from education. Yeah. If you go through your Facebook page, which I have, I don't know a whole lot about you other than that you're in real estate, you're in leadership, and you like to work out. I don't know anything, and you have a little tiny dog. That's it. Absolutely. So where did you come from? How did you end up in real estate? You know, how what how did you become a realtor? How did you get into leadership? What does it take to be an OP? I, I want to know, I want to know, Howard, unrevealed, peel that onion for us. Christopher, you got it. Okay, so um uh, I grew up in Annapolis, Maryland, um, you know, right outside of Washington, D.C. My dad was in the Naval Academy Band in Maryland, and um, uh, and we had a great life up there. I mean, just just a lot, a lot of good times. More, If I even went into them, I would tear up. Um, I've lost both my parents uh, in, in, in over 20 years ago, with both, well, one with a long time ago, a while ago, um, so I miss them a lot. But anyway, we grew up in Annapolis. My dad was a musician. My mom, when we were young, young, was kind of, a, you know, not kind of, she was a stay-at-home mom. My parents were the generation where you tried your best to do that if you could. There's no dishonor or not, but they, they, that was important to them. When my younger brother, uh, who's five years younger than me, went to uh, school, then they, my mom started to get little odds and ends jobs. And, you know, we weren't wealthy by any means. We weren't starving. We, it was nothing like that. We had we needed to have, but we were not wealthy by any means. Um, 
the drummer from my dad's Naval Academy band, a guy named Joe Maneri, who's still in real estate to this day up in Maryland. It's crazy. Um, went to my mom one day and said, you should get into real estate. You should sell. And my mom was like, yeah, it sounds interesting. So she, in Maryland, she goes to get her license. Chris, at this time, I'm probably, I'm only like 10. If my brother was five, I'm 10, 10, 11, whatever I am at that age. So she gets her license, goes into business with a small independent up in that area. And I went with her to her office, like, every time I could, every day. Like, I'd go there after school and do homework. Like, I geeked out going into that office. It wasn't a big office. There were maybe 50 agents in the whole office, and and they did what they did. But I watched everything. And don't make fun of me because you know I'm a good deal older than you. But, like, this was back when the real Tron computer was one computer, which is the size of my whole desk thing here. And you put a phone <laughs> into the thing, like a modem, and everybody had to use that same device. Well, I'm like 12 years old. I learned how to work the MLS Realtron computer in that office. I learned how to add listing, delete listing. Like I knew how to do everything. It was, it was like DOS at its worst in the 70s is what this was. But I also was listening to them making calls and all this kind of stuff. So I, I was falling in love with real estate. I was one of these geek people that was like, you know how someone's like in a room and they're like, who would, would anybody ever want to go into real estate like right as their first career? And I'm like, me, 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 me. Um, so anyway, I just, I would literally cry if we passed the real estate office and we didn't get to go in and I got to do stuff in there. Uh, I, you know, I was like the youngest version of an ISA or OSA, whatever it is. I was like calling for sale by owners, all this kind of stuff at my young age um, on behalf of my mom's practice. So um, fast forward, um, I, you know, go through high school. We moved to Florida in the meantime. We moved to Orlando. My dad went to work for Disney when he retired from the military. Um, and so we moved to Orlando. And um, my mom started her practice there. She had to start all over again um, because, you know, changing markets and whatnot. Um, but I was more involved with high school, high school band. I was very involved in band, as you said. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and I didn't have near the time to spend around them. But she was doing it. And then um, when I finished high school and it was time to start college, and it's funny because I think you were talking about this. On one, I listened to about three of your podcasts the other day, and you were talking about college, not college, school, this, what, how. So I was trying to make the determination like, hey, this is it. Well, I'd sign you can go into real estate right now. And then, but again, not to generalize a generation, but it was like, no, you're going to college. Yeah. That's what you're doing. And if you finish college, you want to do the real estate gig, then do it. Well, I have a huge, 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 huge passion for music education. You probably can kind of see behind me because I don't, I'm unprofessional and I don't have a background on right now, but that's all stuff from bands and kids and teaching and all that. I love it. So I went to high, to college to be a high school band director. So I was a high school, I went to, I got my music education degree. So, um, I went into teaching right out of college as a high school band director. Well, I loved it. I loved almost every aspect of it. Except <laughs> the the bureaucracy of the education field is more again that's another podcast and um, the pay dude the pay like I went this is no lie I'm being very vulnerable with you I went to buy my first home and like I had my father co-sign and I've already been a teacher for seven or eight years yeah and, yeah dude, you're like, like yeah you kind of embarrassed a little bit totally and it's humiliating yeah and it's like financially this and and i think you know me well enough now to know that my main pro my my main passion isn't around money the only mm -hmm. reason i want to have money is to be able to do for others i mean that with my heart and soul so, so bef before you go on i do want to touch on that point because there are two books i'm reading now that talk about it one is actually a gary v book i've never i've never i didn't buy the gary v book I, i'm not discounting him they think he's obviously brilliant but he just wasn't on my cup of tea but this book was bought for me and he mentioned something that uh he never works he doesn't work for money if you start working for money then you're going to be broke and at the same time i'm rereading the uh actually it's right here it's on this i'm, I'm really reading it the mre book again for like the 11th time um i read a lot so in that uh, gary keller says it too oh you got it too gary yeah. keller says it too he's like if you work for money you're only you're going to cap yourself yeah, you're, you, you know do the money can do that's that's what he says just do what you love like this podcast here makes me zero dollars but i really love this format and how to connect with people like like now i know your story i've known you for almost seven eight years i don't know your story more people should know more of your story by the way because if they scroll through your feed 
no one knows anything about you. And I absolutely right. love that you should take a clip of you telling this story and then the rest of it, because I just interrupted you really rudely and then put it up there. And so people can get to know the Howard, like this guy. Yeah. So anyways, continue on. So I didn't even know what to cut you off, but I didn't yeah, want to lose that all, point. It's all valid and it's all, it's all connected. So um, I, I always had that passion of the real estate behind. So I sat down with my mom and I, I in, in Orlando, and this is in 1994, and I said, I think I want to try this real estate thing. Like I had gone through a lot of frustrating things with education and I thought, you know, I could try it. If I don't like it, I can go back in education. There's no, you know, I always have that. I always have my degree. I always have all that there, but I wanted to try it. So I went into real estate as a salesperson in Orlando um, uh, in um, December 19th, 1994. The reason I know the date that I was licensed is because it's my brother's birthday. <laughs> So that's when I got licensed was then. And I went to, to work as an agent uh, in a, in a uh, it was Cole Banker. That's where I went and it was where I started at that time and uh, became an agent then um, and still in the Orlando marketplace. So, um, but what I did do, right, because like you said, I, you know, my, my personal life is all about education and, and teaching and influencing and that type of thing. So I, I still kept up teaching through working with some high school programs, working for some school systems, doing some public speaking, doing some leadership education, doing some teaching. I still kept my hand in it, even though I wasn't doing it full time. So it was really cool because I was doing sales as an independent contractor and I was doing the stuff in the schools at the same time. So it was a beautiful thing. And um, I did that for about oh, three, four years, I guess. And uh, I made one company switch to uh, what was then Prudential Florida Realty, who was the largest company. And there was no Keller Williams at this point in time in our state. Um, I didn't even know who it was at that point. So um, I switched over to them and, uh, um, and went almost immediately into leadership. And so when I went to leadership, um, I, they moved me to Fort Myers Beach, which I had never been to in my life. I had never been to Fort Myers Beach. And... Um, and I'm just me, I'm single, still am, it's just me, except for my little dog. Um, but uh, it's just me and I moved out, you know, didn't have her then obviously. Um, and people are like, you don't have kids? I'm like, I've got thousands of kids. If you look in the wall behind me, which I'll explain more later about that. But anyway, um, so I moved down there and they put me in an office and uh, great leadership I went to work for down there, but I didn't realize what I was getting myself into because Right at that point, our company was changing franchises. Like it was like selling, getting rid of Prudential, being sold to a company called St. Joe. There's people you work with in your market center that could probably tell you the same story because they were in there with me. Um, but anyway, um, I went into this office and I'm there with like 25 agents on Fort Myers Beach. I had never recruited before. I had never done anything like that before. So um, I built that office over a few years to, uh, like 80 or 90 agents to the point where there were, you know, was no desks for anybody. It was all I did, Chris, was train. Like there was nobody around me training. I just trained. I'm going to train you how to do listings. I'm going to train you on objections. I'm going to train you on how to build your business. Like I'm going to train you on growth. So, and then I just recruited, recruited, recruited and built that thing big enough um, that it turned some heads within the company. Um, then um, they moved me to Naples. <laughs> At this time, I'm still under 40 years old, so I'm a little bit younger than you. And um, But everybody I was working with was way older than me and had a lot more seasoning, and I was in a marketplace. Chris, that was in like 2001 or two, something like that. And the average sales price in my office then was like $700,000. So wow. it was in a crazy, crazy time. I mean, it was all celebrity, people buying. It was, you know, it was, it was the Naples marketplace. So... Um, I did that for a few years. Then I um, uh, relocated back to up to Tampa, where I am now. Um, it was right when my father was becoming ill. I wanted to be closer to where my family was and that type of thing. So um, I was with that company all the way till um, they, a major sale happened, and I wasn't real comfortable there. So then I went to work for a small, uh, smaller Prudential franchise in the Tampa Bay marketplace, and in that scenario i was opening up offices from scratch like there was it's like here's a desk and it wasn't the keller Williams model it was like here's a desk and here's an office and here's some keys go for it so I was just <laughs> recruiting good luck um, and i had a much better comfort level at that point um worked for some wonderful people there with that franchise uh and was with them for about eight 
years, I guess it was probably about eight years. Now, here's where it gets really interesting. So when the, now the market crashes, right? We're now we're around 2008-ish, right? Seven, eight, whatever that was. And um, I don't know about you at that time, but I just got burned out. Yeah, I was like, burnt. That's why like, I started bartending again. Yeah, exactly. I was just burned out. I was like, I just, I remember sitting down going, the rat race is just, is killing me. And um, mm -hmm. when so- does it end? Exactly. So I left my license active and I still said, you know, I'll still do some sales and whatnot, but I think I want to teach. And I went back into teaching um, okay. for a couple of years, um, uh, just two, actually. I just taught for two years. And uh, my coach, at, uh, who was my coach for a long time, in fact, he's my sponsor, and he called Williams, a guy named Rich Rector, gave me a call one day and he's like, what, dude, why aren't you in real estate leadership right now? And why aren't you with Keller Williams? That's what, that was the conversation. And I'm like, well, I had gotten burned out. You know, I was a little frustrated. You know, And he goes, well, just have a conversation. Have a conversation. So um, I, I'm sure you're aware, maybe your listeners are, but we have a process that's called career visioning, which is a very powerful process yeah. of hiring talent, finding talent, sustaining talent, that type of thing. So uh, Nikki Baldini and Mark Lewis, the leaders of our region, took me through that process. Nikki did to become, um, uh, uh, well, we didn't know what I was going to become. There was no, it was just like, let's do the process and see what happens. We'll see. That's what it was. And it was about three months. I'm like, all good. And I don't know about you, Chris, but anytime you're looking for opportunity and you're wanting to do some different things, when you don't have to do it, it's the best time to. Yeah, yeah that's exactly it. When you're not under pressure. You don't feel that. So I was like, let's just see if it works. It works. It doesn't. It doesn't. So Howard, real quick, not to cut you off, but um, is this when you met Evan and Dean? When you went back oh, into that? Um, no. Uh, I. How'd you meet them? So um, Dean um, was, uh, he's a color guard director and he's in music education. And um, what I left out of my story, I'm glad you asked that, is um, while I was in real estate in leadership, I was also a director for, um, it's called a drum bugle corps. Think of it as marching pageantry arts. It sounds like, dur, 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 dur. it's not that. It's much more sophisticated than a person might think. But uh, I was the director of an ensemble, actually based out of Boston, Massachusetts, even though I lived in Florida. And uh, I was there with them for nine years. And um, I hired Dean to be the color guard director and designer for that particular group. And that was... Gosh, Chris, that was probably in 2003. I think he was with me there three, four, five, six, seven, four or five years with me there. So I've known him since then. So you you developed a relationship then. So who for everyone who's listening or watching, Dean and Evan are now buddies of mine. They actually are now my neighbors. I, I sold them a house in their neighborhood and I moved into their neighborhood and we still haven't hung out yet, by the way. Mm -hmm. Um, but we will. And um Howard recommended them to to me. And Dean just turned 30. And were you at his he had a ton of cars outside? Were you at were you at his no, no, um, he's in Fort Lauderdale and I'm in Tampa. He's in Coral Springs. Oh, yeah, 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 Tampa. That's right. So you couldn't make it. Right. But I think someone's at my door now. Let me go get him in. Hey Dean. Hey <laughs> Howard, we surprised you. Howard didn't know Dean was going to be on today. No, so. I didn't know yesterday because <laughs> actually. Oh, man, it's so good to see you. That, that's why I kind of panicked last night when you sent me that late night birthday text. So <laughs> this morning, I'm just going to send you, hope I see you soon. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. 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 He thought he knew. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, um, so we're on a side, Howard, while you're talking, you know, because I'm worried that, you know, Dean is home with Noah, right? She's sick. Yeah, she's a little stuck under the weather, but she's sleeping right now. So, so I'm worried that she's gonna wake up, and then he's got to go. And we did all this, so that's why I had to cut you off. I'm like, Howard, your your story is great, but I definitely need to bring oh, Dean on because we're a half hour in. Boring. And, um, no, I love Dean. I love me some Dean. <laughs> yeah. So Dean, go back onto a couple of his. So you sent me a text while he was talking that <laughs> he's a legend in pageantry activity. And he that he was being humble when he was saying that. So talk more about what do you know that he's not telling us? Well, I mean, you know, since I've been listening to the beginning of this podcast, I'm 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 kind of in awe because I don't know that side of Howard, you know, and uh, I know he is a jack of all trades. I, you know, I've always known that, but I guess I never really knew the extent of, of what you do, Howard, and listening to you talk and, and tell your story um, that 
enlightened me onto your other world that you live in. But then I also started to see the parallels and I saw how it makes a lot of sense, how we got to know each other right. um, and how you do what you do. Um, you know, he's, he doesn't, he, he's kind of modest in what he's talking about, but you know, he, he's always been there for like, I mean, anyone, I mean, I, I met him because I was hired by him to teach a color guard. And, and over that time, you know, we've just become really good friends and, you know, I've, I've, I've learned from him and, you know, I value his opinion and I mean, his, his organizational skills have been something that have, you know, I've modeled in my own high school programs, just trying to like, you know, <laughs> find my place in the whole thing. And, and we've actually brought him down to either judge or consult, or even last year during COVID, we called him one time. We were like, Howard, we just need you to talk to the kids. Like we need you to like cheer them up and, and make them think everything's going to be okay. And, and you did that. You took time out of your schedule. I think you did a couple of them, right? It was like two or three and, and he would get on the, the, the zoom or, or at that time I was calling them the doom meetings. Um, you know, he would get on those and, and, and talk to the kids and, and try to like, you know, make them think that all this is going to be okay. So, you know, it makes sense where you've ended up powered and, and how you're, how, how you are, because like I usually tell the story about the drummer, your, your dad's friend who was a drummer, but yeah. wanted you in real estate. And I was like, well, that's Howard. That's, that's the combination of the two right there. It's perfect. No, it means a lot. It means a lot. Yeah. I, I think probably why you both don't know a lot of the other side is like, I don't know that I've intentionally kept it separated because there's are, are a lot of crossovers with, you know, I've, I've hired people into our company's world from marching country arts and things that we've done our music education. And I, you know, brought people like Chris to Eugene, like when it was time for you and Evan to, to move and whatnot. Um, I think sometimes I worry because I don't want either side to feel like I'm like giving less to the other side, you know, to, or diminishing what I'm able to give them based on what I'm doing. It's funny because people will say like, um, you know, who's your family? And it's people like Dean. It's people like that in my world that I've been um, blessed to be around and uh, um, in a lot of cases watch grow up teach their children. I've had people in the activity that Dean was involved with me where I maybe grew up with their, the parent and then they're in my group or ensemble as a, as a member, you know, Dean, like we had some kids like that in Boston and all that. Yeah. Well, that's the power of telling your story is that uh, people that you know and love or even admire, you know, you don't even know everything about who you are. And it's funny. So I, my team is very, we're very big on telling our story. We, we mail our story out. We write emails about our story, what's going on in our lives, our social feeds all directed by the story. And they, they, sometimes they have a hard time being vulnerable and sharing that. But I'm like, the good people, the, the people that matter, get it. And the people who don't, you, you don't even have to worry about them. Right. And in the relationships you, because you don't know where you can connect with somebody on something unless you share their, your story and then right. they can say, oh yeah, I didn't like, so Dean has such a good relationship with you. He didn't know even half that stuff. Right. And then I'm in the other side of that. I knew you did some band stuff, but I didn't know to what extent. And that's right. why I wanted to ask about because you you immediately jumped into this podcast at, i started at 25 years ago but yeah but you were alive before then what happened then you know and i wanted to know that because you don't right. talk about that so that's the power of story and i would encourage everyone listening watching you guys there just really get your story out there it's part of what we do here in our team and not not just strategically i think it's powerful um and um, i'm gonna get another point on that it's something i've always wanted to do is I always wanted to put a camera on my parents and do a deep dive interview because <laughs> how well do we really, really know them? Like, who I mean, was their first kiss? Where, you know, why huh? you pay them that you're able to do that? Because mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I mean, God bless them; they won't be around forever. So, why you got the opportunity to be able to have those conversations with them and learn about them, hundred percent. Yeah, where do they go on vacation? You know, like what are the shows they watched as a kid? What are some life changing moments and conversations that they have? And on that, that's a good segue. That's a perfect segue. So, Howard, you actually gave me a life changing um, call one day. So, uh, a couple of years ago, I was kind of in a real estate funk. I was a little bit burnt out. And I'm just like, I just wasn't feeling it. And I don't even know if you remember this conversation, but it, just something you said in passing that stuck with me till this day. Uh, maybe because it stroked my ego and you're good at that. But you called me and I'm like, why do you keep calling? Like I said, like Howard, why do you keep calling me? Like, you know, you just always call me, pet me up and give me compliments and all that. Like, why do you do that? And your exact words were, Chris, you're the next biggest thing in real estate and you just don't know it yet. 
and then you just then you went on like like that was like that wasn't the most profound thing i've heard in 20 years and i've never so you you have a really good i don't know if you're just bsing me but i like well, the sound I, of that. i will i will <laughs> i can add on to that because i have a moment where howard doesn't know like he did a lot for me and howard you probably don't even remember this and it was one of the years i don't remember if it was the first year of the colts or what but I ran into you at the regional at we were at, we were at a regional for the color guard and you were there watching and it was in um, at UCF mm -hmm. and uh, you told me you were there and I came and found you and the two of us sat together in the stands and we were just sitting talking and we were watching a couple of groups and I, I sat there and I was I was kind of at the point where I was like, I don't think this is just really for me anymore. And as we were sitting there, you were just like talking about my group and I was saying how young they were and I don't know what to do. And you were like, they were amazing. And they were this. And, and just the way you talked to me gave me like 10 minutes of, I stood up and I was like, I'm okay. And I, I think that was like 2015. Mm -hmm. And so here we are now and I'm still going at it, but it was just that little bit of, of you being you that made me get to where I am, you know, and keep going. I'm humbled, I'm humbled by both your words where that's concerned. I think that, <sighs> You know, we talk about intentionality um, like a lot. Um, Chris, you were mentioning some books. One of my one of my favorite books is John Maxwell's Intentional Living because um, I abide by a lot of what's in that book, and um, I'm not I don't have it figured out by any means. Goodness knows, um, but what I do work to do is try to be intentional with gratitude, and because uh, I've been very blessed to be able to have people like you guys in my life, a lot of wonderful people in my world, a great family that raised me, that type of thing. So I, I do my best to be as, in, as intentional as possible. And, you know, I think um, some people might think, like, how, how do you, how, why? And it's, um, I just, in my world, it's kind of been my purpose. Like, I feel like that's what my purpose is. And so it's, it's, it's caused me to go, who do I need to call today? And, help change their world and who do I need to give a hug to and help change their world and who who did I come in contact with over the last couple of days that looked like they were having a little bit harder of a time that I need to reach out to or get someone that I know would inspire them to reach out to them so it's just it's again I don't have a perfected by any means but that intentionality piece is important well, you well you um exemplify the two of the most powerful things that all leaders should have all good leaders have and it's not something you can really teach it's really just who a person is and that's well you can work on it empathy and kindness mm -hmm. you know empathy and kindness when i see a leader in any any aspect any type of teacher or any sort of uh, a politician or any authority and they don't have if they're not empathetic and they don't have kindness there i'm usually i just usually just wipe them away because they don't have uh the emotional intelligence to really connect with people and really see what people are really struggling with and you had that you have that natural ability to 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 do that like to a point where if something's going wrong in howard's life no one's ever going to know because i feel like you feel like you shouldn't burden people with that that you should care more about their problems than they should be worrying about yours i could be totally wrong but that's just how that's how i i grab from you and that's why i think you're you are such a great leader and you and you really do help with leadership on a huge level on uh, not just the kw world and the real estate world but with people like dean so and yeah. the color guard stuff and all that i i appreciate that and uh, i've like i said I've been blessed with what i have people like dean in my life and you and um you know, uh, that's something it's something I struggle with myself from the standpoint that like that's when you're like, oh, this, this. Oh, and I know you like to work out. Well, it's because every like I'm like, I mean, look, I've like gained and lost the same 50 pounds, probably seven. <laughs> you're, not, you're not alone. You know, like, uh, you know, the con that constant struggle. And um, I think that, uh, you know, I think that I've, I've been more vulnerable myself just even in the last seven, eight, nine, ten years into like, okay, I've got it. I've got it. I got to take care of myself because if I don't take, you know, you know how they teach uh, Chris and our, and our Keller Williams where logic makes you think and emotion makes you act. Yep. And like anytime I've been, be able to be, been truly successful at something, it's when I have other people that I love in my heart that I'm working to do that for and with. And that's why I don't know if you ever get a chance, it's been going around the last week. There's a Simon Sinek video have you guys either of you seen that dean you need to see that too and you need to share it with your your kids i'm going to share it with our tarpon springs kids as well um it, it it compares when you fall in love in a relationship to leadership and how it happens through time and investment in people and time 
Um, oh my God, did it ever, you definitely check that out. I'll send it to you guys. But it just okay, cool. it resonated with me tremendously because, um, you know, that's what I love about leadership is, is pouring in, is pouring in to people. And like, I, I, the one thing I really enjoy about social media is I watch close when I see people that might be hurting or um, in some element of need where I can maybe fill in some gaps or help out or, 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 or go in there. And I don't know if it's, you know, if it's a God thing, I don't know if it's a faith thing. I don't know what it is, but it's just. Kind well, you of did it. You did it for me. Uh, that link that you're talking thing. about. Yeah. Yeah. Dean too. So that link you're talking about, uh, send it to me. I'll put it for everyone listening and, and watching and you're curious of where to get it. I'll put it in the description of this podcast and on the YouTube link. Yep. For sure. For sure. Cool. Now, you know what? So I try to keep these things under an hour. And the most important thing that we are going to talk about, we didn't even talk about. So I'm going to give you two options, Howard. You can come back next week. Because <laughs> it has to be next week because people, because the next episode has to, so when they have to, they're going to be watching it. So the people, so people aren't listening to this live or they're not, you know, eventually someone's going to find me. And then they're going to be binge, binge listening through all these all at one time. So you can't be in four episodes from now because then it's not going to make sense. You have to be in the next one. Or you can try to explain something super, super powerful in 13 minutes. Do you think you <laughs> no, we'll, we'll, we'll make it work for next week. I'll get you on there. We'll, 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 okay. We'll, my calendar for sure. Okay. Oh, my phone's going crazy. I, I, a true professional would have muted my phone. Hold on. Let me uh, send him the text. Yeah. So, well, that was fascinating. So the thing that Howard was going to talk to, if you're, if you are binge listening to this and you're one of this in the next episode, Howard called me to criticize, not criticize, to critique is the proper word on uh, my podcast. He says things like, don't use Adele music because you'll get copyrighted. And I didn't know that. And <laughs> yeah, slow <laughs> I know I why he knows that. that. I know why he knows that. It happened to you, Dean? No, but that's a big that's a big hot button in what his other half of his life. Yeah, that happens a lot with us. Okay. Yeah. Well, he's yeah, a lot of do that. Do things like that. Yeah. Well, well, I loaded last week's up because uh Tabitha looks like Adele and a little bit. And so I played like a little bit of Adele music on there. I'm like, listen, I have a whopping 300 listeners. Of course Adele wants me to talk about it, right? <laughs> but but I put it up on YouTube and they immediately flagged it copyright flag and I I can't monetize that episode. I don't have a big enough channel to monetize anyhow. But I was like, what? Like why wouldn't anyone want their information shared? But maybe they thought I was using it for myself, but whatever. I was giving her a shout out. It's a good song. Um and then the other thing he was telling me is that I I do talk really fast. And since you've told me that, Howard, I've heard it before. But since you said it and I, and I even did it today. I caught myself and I, and I purposely slowed down my three. I did three listing presentations yesterday and purposely slowed down um, because of that is that I feel like I have and so much to say and I, and I want to get my point out and I just can't get it out. So I have a lot of words to get me in my story to my point. And in my growing up, I was thinking about this, like as I am talking and it happens now as in my adult life, you guys want to talk over me right now. I bet tell me to shut up, but it takes me a while to get to my point. And I, people would stop me from getting to my point. And then I'm like, oh, I didn't even get to say what I wanted to say. So right. that's what, so I say, I talk really, really fast to get to that point. And, um, or I don't know, that's just what, that's what I'm going to chalk it up to. Uh, so yeah, anyway, so Howard gave me a call and, and then, and then during that call, which led to what we were supposed to talk about today between D, Dean rudely interrupted us is that we, um, <laughs> that we, um, he was going to talk about what's life beyond being a real estate agent. It's not just, there's other opportunities that you can uh, grow your business with, whether it's a working in title or working with mortgage companies on a more ownership level than as opposed to just a, a vendor or a lead source for, for them. And he was going to really dive into that. So we're going to dive into that in the next episode. And um, with that, I'm pretty much done here unless uh, Dean or Howard, you guys want to add anything or share any thoughts or whatever. Well, I, I want to thank you guys for the opportunity. I have been, I have mentioned to Chris a couple times about stopping over for a drink yes. and I want to get the girls together because no one needs friends and he's got the Brady bunch. So I thought what a great combo right there. So um, Dean, I wanna, uh, why, 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 why I have, Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I did, Dean, we, did, ahead. we were leaving the other day and we did see, we, we were driving down the road and I, we saw this guy on a scooter and Evan goes, is that Chris? And we drive by you. I think you were handing out flyers or something. Yeah. And you were literally cruising on the sidewalk. And yeah. So anyway, we have to meet around. Um, Howard, it's really good to see you. Thanks for the birthday message. And you know, I love your friend. And 
Jeez. next time you're in South Florida, make sure you give me a call. I want to have you over and, and you know. I would absolutely. I definitely, I got to get your beautiful house that Chris sold you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. About putting out flyers because we were just talking about his flight. Yeah, it's so, funny. About like, like, Dean, I go by your house every night um, on when I'm walking my dog before every single night. And last night I saw you had a party. I wasn't invited. It's fine. <laughs> Evan did invite me last time to a holiday, holiday uh, Halloween one, but I didn't know because he, he, first of all, it was last minute, right? So he, he was like, hey, by the way, we have a party. I have four kids. It is really hard for me to join the witch now. Like, hey, babe, you mind watching our little savages why I go party with these guys? And then he no, says, we want, you we want you to bring them like this. Oh. No, to have friends, yeah. Like it was a it was a zombie cheerleader Halloween party because of Disney zombies, and Noah was obsessed with. Oh, it. I didn't yeah. know it was for kids. I thought yeah, it was for no, adults. Totally for kids, yeah. Well, I, that was not disclosed. Oh uh, well, I'll, I'll speak <laughs> with you. I'll have words with him. <laughs> but come over anytime, man. We're always outside, especially on weekends. Just come over, grab a chair, yeah, yeah. grab we a beer, hang out. You, they will. They will. They, she she needs neighborhood friends, and she will love it. My so. kids are the same age. Even just send her alone if you don't want to come over. <laughs> like, seriously, it's fine. Um, so, yeah, they'll have a great time. All right. So, with that, so everyone, thanks for listening. This was episode nine, where next one's going to be 10. It's, it looks like it's going to be with Howard again to tell us some really cool stuff. I just kind of put him on the spot. So, hopefully, he does show up for 10. <laughs> and uh, you guys can get this on YouTube. Uh, you can get it on anywhere with your podcast. Obviously, if you're listening, you probably have it playing on your podcast. But if the visual version is on YouTube, and also just a reminder, we do have my training Tuesday nights are free for realtors every Tuesday night, just about every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. The link will be in the description if you want to join us for that cool stuff. And once again, Dean, thanks for surprising us. Howard, thanks yeah. for your uh, your time and your busy schedule. And I'll see you next week, Howard. And for everyone else, I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.